reporting. We will quickly review remaining assessment items to complete our item analysis uh, that we started on Friday. And uh, I'm going to sort by average score. I believe we took care of the first two. Is that correct? I'm going to print this to make sure. Uh. So I'm going to keep this just as a record going to show the main things. Um, I want to make sure we covered this one. Multiple choice. Oh, we did. We talked about custodians. That was the last thing we covered. Any any question on the first two items? We're good. Those should be in the recording. Let's look at the next one. So this is a true-false official definition. This A state of being secure and free from danger or harm the actions taken to make someone or something secure. Is this an official definition of uh, security? And, and uh, the correct answer is false. The official definition of information security. Okay. Now notice the qualification. The definition by who? Our author or CNSS? CNSS, okay? So that's why uh, we had some students, uh, five students answer incorrectly. Um, any question about this one? So all you gotta do is look up the official definition in the slides we covered in chapter two, I think, CNSS. So- I do have a question about number one. Okay. Let's go back to number one. Well, my question really is, um, I just want to verify. So in the, I got my, I got the answer that I use, I referenced the study guide. Wait, is this, that's number one? No, the one I'm talking about is the one with the data custodians. Oh, okay. Well, so everybody's ans everybody's question order was different. From what we're showing on screen, the the order I created the questions on the system is different than the one that you took. So let's go to custodians again, right? So it's this one you're talking about, the one about custodians. Individuals who control and are therefore ultimately responsible for the security and use of a particular set of information are known as data blank. And, and you're saying... Well, got, that's the thing. So... In the study guide, for where it says this ultimate re, um, individuals who control and are there for this specifically, the words from ultimately responsible for the security and use of particular and use of a particular set of information are known as blank. That those words are referencing data owners in the study in my study guide i don't know if i have an older version no 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 i'm smiling because if i remember right this is the first version of the assessment and i think last year the same thing happened and uh students did a scratch the record kind of thing and then one of them went wait a minute that's not the case so we were kind of rushed on friday uh, and and uh, that probably this same thing probably would have happened on Friday. So what I'm going to do is just validate what you're saying. And if that is the case, and I, I believe you're correct, um, I'm going to go back in and change the answer and it'll rescore everybody's yeah, um, assessment. Ultimately, ultimately okay. okay. So ultimately, when you talk about uh, the ultimate responsibility, yes, owners. So owners have the power, when you talk about governance, 
owners are the ones that don't exercise their rights, but should. Here's a great example of that. Patients of healthcare organizations and practitioners. If you're a patient of a healthcare practice, you know, or, or a professional, and, and you have a question about your medical records, you'd be shocked at how often the healthcare professionals just brush that off and they say, oh, no, um, we, have to, we have to charge you for your medical records. We left, good example, my wife and I were leaving one doctor to go to another doctor's office on island. And I was told, oh, there's a $50 charge to duplicate your records before you go somewhere else. And I said, funny you should mention that I was the HIPAA security officer of a county hospital. And in 1989, when HIPAA became mandatory, the US government mandated that patients have access to their electronic medical records and that any organization that did anything to restrict, deny access could be fined up to $50,000 and go to jail for five years. So I'm gonna ask the question again, that's my information. You're saying I got to pay what to get my own information? And they went, um, we'll get back with you. And then they sent an email about 15 minutes later and said, we won't charge you. Here's your information. Ownership is powerful. Who else has information? Students under FERPA, F-E-R-P-A. The federal government protects your digital academic information. So yeah, this is huge. And this is another way of bringing like the chapter we're in now about governance to sharp relief because a lot of people don't understand their role. So I am very glad that you called this out, Milan. Thank you. Yeah. No problem. So the question was raised by Suleiman, because I got to get his name right. No, you no. I have a recording where you pronounced your name, Su Suleiman. Suleiman, as opposed to Lehman. So it's Lehman, not Lehman. Okay, I have to listen to that recording a little more cleanly. All right. He asked, why do we have to pay $15 in order to get, okay, your private academic data is protected, but when you want a, an official transcript created by the organization, it has to have an official seal. Somebody has to verify the data. There's a process. and. FERPA is really uh, framed to protect others from getting into your Kool-Aid, but what you're doing is asking the university to share your Kool-Aid, right, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? So I hope that answers your, it's a good question. And that's, that's uh, and so there's additional process. They have to be able to prove whatever they send in a transcript is accurate at the cost of, you know, at the potential cost of their accreditation if they have a serious problem with it, right? So. That's that's another serious matter. Somebody mentioned something about question number one. Somebody said they wanted to look at question number one again. Oh, no, 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 that's right. It was, uh, they clarified and said not number one on my screen, but theirs. All right. All right. So I'm going to go on with this one here, multi-answer. Now, multi-answer is particularly thorny because if you pick more than one answer and you're not supposed to pick more than one answer, then you lose points. And this is a great example, I think, of why some students did not, there were some that chose answers that were not correct. For a cyber program to be effective, the following essentials are required. Okay, so you have to have managerial components. You have to have technical components. So you have to have like tools and measures, they're called controls. So you have oversight by management, you have controls and the systems and data, and then you have to have, you have to balance security and access. A lot of times if you make things so secure that they're troublesome for users to get into and use, 
they do stupid things like, I don't know, write their password on a sticky note and put it under their keyboard. It's a thing, it happens all the time, right? Now, what about dedicated security systems? Do you have to have a $50,000 uh, whole corporate firewall in order to have network security? No, you don't have to have a dedicated security system. You do have to have some kind of firewall, but do you have to have a dedicated firewall that costs a fortune? No. What about certified consultants? Do you have to have certified consultants in order to have effective cybersecurity? Well, you'd have better cybersecurity, certainly. That so so the see how the word required is emphasized with italics and asterisks. Do you know why I put an asterisk by a word in an item on your assessment? Because I want you to watch out for your asterisks. Cover your ass. Asterisks, right? Whenever you see something in asterisks, that's a deliberate, that's like me stomping on the floor when I'm trying to give you a hint in a conversation about something. I'm trying to, I'm trying to light up the screen in a way and say, okay, the word, what's the key word there? Required. Nice to have and required are two different levels. Okay. And if you don't have supervision and oversight, you don't have a program, period. If you don't have technical controls like logins and passwords, you don't have you don't have security. You just don't. If you don't balance access with security and it's too hard or it's too easy, you don't have security. Oh, I don't have passwords. I have been in places where that is the case. People don't have passwords. They just it's like, this is my computer, it's in my office, I'm the only one with the key to my office. I'm like, you do understand that's connected to the internet, right? And you leave it on at night, or it can be turned on remotely. Did you know that you can turn on a computer remotely in the middle of the night, even if it's turned off? Do people know this? Yeah. Can I show you something really quick? Should I show you this right now so you see this for yourself? Seeing is believing. And yeah, and the secret sauce here in the Wi-Fi, that's probably in the ethernet that it's gonna be more obvious. I'm gonna go into properties and then I'm gonna go into configure. Oh, and then there's power management. Oh, look, allow this device to wake up the computer only allow a magic packet to wake up the computer. That is there for every network interface on every Windows system worldwide. And you'd be shocked at how often it's turned on by default, especially in organizations, because they wanna be able to run maintenance at night, right? Any questions? A magic packet is a it is a specially formed uh, Ethernet and or wireless frame that has instructions in the header that triggers a hardware response to power on the system if it's if it's turned off but plugged in. It's a very special chunk of data. And hackers love that stuff. They just love it. Okay. A zero day? A zero click malware, meaning no, in, no user interaction required. Um, that would be more like a drive by download where the user is just on a web page and they don't do anything. And it's like all of a sudden, whoa, what's this in my, <laughs> what's this in my downloads? So, that would be something a little different, but um, we we will we will revisit that when we get on to some other stuff. We were talking about Black Hat, and we talked about um, in 1993 the first Black Hat conference. It is false. I think DEFCON was the 
DEF CON was the one that was held in Las Vegas, and it was a gathering of people interested in information security, including the good guys, the authors, the lawyers, the government employees, the law enforcement officials. Those were the guys. Who goes to Black Hat? <laughs> Who wears the Black Hat? That's synonymous with bad guy or bad girl, bad person, however you decide to you know, identify yourself. How, what, regardless of your gender identification, if you're wearing a black hat, that generally means you are intentionally a hacker and you're not necessarily doing it for good. Any questions? Believe it or not, a whole bunch of law enforcement is often very interested to see who enrolls and registers for Black Hat. Just saying. An agreement. Web hosting services are usually arranged with an agreement def de defining minimum service levels known as a what? Service level agreement. That's literally what the acronym means. If you have a web hosting service that doesn't have some kind of basic agreement on how much the uptime is, you're a sitting duck in terms of your contract. They can shut down your website forever and a day. And there's a word for that. It's called no availability. Remember CIA in terms of basics? If you don't have availability, you don't have cybersecurity. You can't get to your data. You can't use your data. It sucks to be you. Why? Because you can't get to your data. You can't use your data. You're shut down. Availability is one of those core principles of cyber. And SLA, a service level agreement, is one of those things that people never think about when they're trying to take care of basics, right? So think availability is one of those standards you should depend on. What would happen if somebody said, oh, if my internet service goes down three times in a month, I get a refund for my internet service fee. Did you know there's a service level agreement for your internet service provider? And did you know that when it's out past a certain amount of time, you can call support, ask them to log it, and get a refund for your month's fee. Did you know this? Yes, it's in the fine print of your service. It's called a service level agreement or uptime. Yeah. How many people actually do that? No one. If more of us started to do it, those who own the connection in their home, owners, stakeholders, governance we could be the tail that wags the dog but we don't i'm just saying just well i gotta start doing that because my internet went out probably like three times in the last week and what you'll find is that if you demand a refund for your monthly service all of a sudden the service truck is available and when are you home so we can be there we're gonna fix this that works everywhere i'm telling you Oh, yeah. Blank was the first operating system to integrate security as one of its core functions. This is just in the weeds of your slides and, and study guide and or study guide. OK. And so Multics was the first one of those. And it was a special thing because it was, it was so unusual to put some security stuff. Cyber EAT. has cyber EAT standard, that means education, awareness, and training, has become a widely accepted evaluation standard for training and education related to the security of information systems and is hosted by CNSS. And that NSTISS number, whatever, blah, 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 blah. So I'm just gonna share something with you. Everybody likes hacks, don't they? Yeah, would you like a hack? Would you like to learn a hack about what you're doing for the next assessment if you're in this class? And I lay this stuff out in front of you on a silver platter and you have time. Did I mention, did I mention, did I mention? You had how long for the test? And this is the average time the average student took to take the test? 
here's a hint and i'm just i'm just saying i mean i'm just trying to this, just call this a value added bonus for what we're doing today right in module one you could do something like i don't know cnss oh there it is it's in the module study guide or it's in oh it's in the chapter one slides right and then i look if i no if i do if i do control no we want to share the secrets everybody's everybody's giddy here and for those of you in saint thomas and joining us remotely if you press control f that's a find option and all you have to do is type in like i don't know cnss and there's one of three there right okay oh slide 26 all right here we go here we go. Slide 26. Now, why am I showing you this stuff? Oh, there's something in there, right? There's some stuff about X, Y, Z axis. Well, maybe that's not, maybe that's not what we're looking for. I searched for CNS, uh, CNSS, but, but what I have to find has to do with what? The answer choices are were and there were some cryptic. You can search for those terms and just eliminate it, right? Now, why do I want you to do this? It is it is important that you learn the skill sets that keep you alive in cyber. And one of those is you're never going to know everything off the top of your head. You just won't. You will not. And some of you are going to say, well, it's not fair, Ken Top. You know, we cover stuff in class and we review things and we discuss things and so on. And I'm like, yeah, we try to hit the high points. If we discuss it in class, it's obviously important, more so than some of the other stuff that's in there. But what about the rest of the information? Well, you're going to get things you have on the assessments from what? The reading assigned, the slides we show in class, right? And I can't possibly put all of that in a study guide. Now, every year somebody asks me, you know, hey, Ken Top, can't you include this stuff in the study guide? And I'm like, I'd like to stay married. I need to keep my hair. Okay. Um, yeah, multiple choice. Now, these are the ones where people got most of them finished, right? So if you got a 0 0.22 score was the average uh, multiple choice question was worth 0.25. So most everybody got this right. I'm not going to cover that, but multi-answer, multi-answer questions. So I think that's the largest uh, issues that we found in our assessment. We'll go ahead and post this recording and, um, and the reconciliation in module one so you can submit a quick correction of your mistakes. Yes, you have a quick question. I'm sorry. 